The next thing that we're going to talk about is movement through the cell membrane. Um, you know, I showed you that that's a bilayer with proteins that allow the channels to move through, um, but the channel will only allow some things and not other things, which makes it semi-permeable. Okay, so there are three kinds, two main categories of transport. The first is passive transport, and we call it passive because it requires no energy. Um, no ATP is expended to make passive transport happen. Examples, diffusion, osmosis, filtration, and facilitated diffusion. Now, facilitated diffusion, the best example of that occurs with insulin. To be able to use sugar inside the cell wall, we have to have another chemical transport it through the wall. It can't do it by itself. So sugar alone can't get in. It must have something to facilitate or help it get through. And in this case of sugar, it's insulin. And that's the role of insulin is to transport sugar into the cells. So we call that facilitated diffusion. Active transport does require ATP. It does require an expenditure of energy. So to, a couple of examples of that include the pumps. We have a sodium potassium pump that we're going to talk about in detail. And another example are vesicles. And those can either be an endocytosis or an exocytosis. And we're going to talk about those two things. Osmosis on the other. Tonicity refers to these concentrations. An isotonic solution has the same concentration. So the fluid around the cell has the same concentration as the fluid within the cell. We refer to a solution with a higher concentration than what's in the cell as hypertonic. And a lower concentration than in the, than in the cell we call hypotonic. And this becomes important to us in medicine when we're giving solutions to patients um, that either we want to pull certain fluids out of them or put fluids. At this point, there's a film I'd like you to, to watch um, that's a little rap about osmosis. Back in them determines what kind of solution tonicity we're going to be using. Filtration. Filtration requires pressure. So it is an example of when you have particles, in this instance they're, they're showing you red blood cells, that can move across under pressure. So they're going to go, they're being forced through the membrane from a an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure outside. Um, an example of this in our bodies is the kidneys. And when we study the urological system, when we talk in depth about the kidney, this, this concept is going to become very important. This is facilitated diffusion, as we talked about. One of the examples is insulin. Uh, what happens is boom, the high concentration to the low concentration, again, whatever the solute is, it can't get through. It's not the right shape. It can't pass through the protein. And so it picks up a carrier which changes the shape and makes it able to go through. Facilitated diffusion. The sodium potassium pump is super important to the body. It is the way that the cells maintain volume, the correct volume within the cells. It's how we do nerve impulses travel. Um, it plays a role in thermoregulation. Uh, what happens here is, and you can see the red are the sodiums uh, and the green boxes are potassium and with the use of a huge amount of ATP or energy the body uh, pumps that sodium out and pumps potassium into the cell and in that process then um, can establish a pulling out or putting in whatever we need to within the cells. The important part to remember about it is that it uses ATP or energy or we can transport by vesicle. Remember your medical terminology, site means cell, endo within, exo without. And so quite simply, this is bringing substances into the cell. It is the process of eating them maybe once you get them in or drinking them in if you need to, or getting them out of the cell, exocytosis. Deoxyribonucleic acid is of course what contains our genetic code. This is uh, shaped by um, a, a long string 
and that's why it's called a polymer mini, mini connected together. Each one contains a sugar, a phosphate group, and one of four nitrogenous bases. Um, those four are adenos, adenine, thiamine, guanine, and cytosine. And you can see that represented by the letters here. And it is how those hook together, how that series happens, that the ordering of them is what determines our genetic code. So it's very important. Um, and to be able to travel and change then you have to have ribonucleic acid, which becomes transfer RNA or messenger RNA within the cell. Basically, a strip of it becomes a single strand. It breaks apart. Um, in this instance, the uracil is re the thiamine is replaced with uracil. Other than that, the other three remain the same. And it travels throughout the cytoplasm then until it finds where it needs to duplicate and hook up. And uh, that process in protein synthesis, you can see it here, the first step is transcription, where it, it, the chemicals within the cell say, hey, it's time to change. And um, so it travels. The, uh, the DNA of the relevant gene unwinds, unwinds and then travels throughout the cytoplasm until it finds the right one and it hooks back up and then the process is called translation. And this happens with the ribosome. So we go back to that very important um, organelle that we talked about earlier on. And we're just kind of skimming over this, but um, it's important for you to understand that protein is survival. Cell division cell life has to, to continue, it has to divide and regenerate itself. And so um, the cell cycle happens in this kind of a, a, a pattern. Interphase is the longest. You can see the actual mitosis happens very short. So there is a DNA replication phase that is uh, the first gap phase, which is G1. So you've got the pieces you need to make the DNA, and then it goes to um, making the DNA or synthesizing it, replicating it. And then um, it goes into the second gap phase where it's actually getting ready to divide. It's kind of gathering all its strength and its energy, and then where it actually divides in the mitotic phase. Um, the time between these is called interphase. So all of this to happen is called interphase to to get the stuff you need, get it ready to go, and then actually be ready to divide. Mitosis occurs in the, uh, when cells divide and you have two distinct cells, each with their own genetic material. Um, so there's two strands of chromosomes that form, and you can be, see them beginning to line up here on the, on the, on the pole. And um, these phases, so prophase, they condense, begin to make the chromosomes. The metaphase, the spindle fibers begin to attach so that these all roll into the middle. In the anaphase, two chromosomes begin to appear. And then in the telophase, you actually see two distinct cells begin to happen. Those are identical daughter cells. And I have a, a little mitosis wrap that kind of helps you learn those phases as well. Guys, I want everyone's attention. We're going to go over what we did yesterday. We're going to go over the stages of mitosis. All right, everybody ready? All right, let's go. Interphase of cell division's longest part. Nuclear membranes intact as it starts. The cell's growing, cytoplasm flowing. Chromosomes get duplicated, DNA gets replicated. Chromosomes are spread out so they can't be seen distinctly. But note the nucleolus, the ribosome factory outside the nucleus, the two centrosomes. They later make a spindle which will pull apart the chromosomes. Prophase follows, the chromosomes condense. Each is made of two sister chromatids like an S. Each sister is a clone, the closest of kin. And a centromere connects them like Siamese twins. The nucleolus disappears and melts away as the cell takes a ribosome production holiday. 
The centrosome separates Sark spindle formation for separating chromatids and cell elongation. Mitosis, chromosomal ride in a pro meta anatela phase divide. Eukaryote stole from one cell to two. Mitosis, how cells renew. In late prophase, pro metaphase, the nuclear membrane disintegrates. The centrosomes migrate to the cell's opposing sides, and between them the fibers of the spindle wind and wind. The spindle's made of microtubule fibers which attach to chromosomes, a kinetic cause a protein pass that serves like a handle that the fibers can grasp. When they pull apart the chromosomes, splitting them in half, the spindle moves the chromosomes with nudges so fine into linear formation on the 50-yard line, a location equatorial, defined in metaphase, where the chromosomes are lined up in that middle place. Mitosis, chromosomal ride in a pro meta phase divide. You carry out stone from one cell to two. Mitosis, how cells renew. The spindle fibers pull on the kinetic cores. A cellular molecular mitotic tug of war. The centromere snaps, sisters get separated. Now these chromatids are chromosomes. They've been upgraded. The snap and separation defines anaphase. The A for apartness, for moving different ways. Kinetic core spindle fibers separate the sister C and waving goodbye. Calling out, I'm gonna miss you. And the other spindle fibers pushing gravel like felons. Make the cell elliptical like, like a watermelon. 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 In watermelon. telophase membranes form around the chromosomes that spread out as a nucleol like come on home. Mitosis, chromosomal ride in a pro meta anatelophase divide. You carry out stone from one cell to two. Mitosis, how cells renew. In animal cells, there's a ring of micro filaments that form at the equator and they cinch themselves in tighter, 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 tighter till the cell is into pieces. Yeah, and animals, that's cytokinesis, but it's different in plants and then the cell divides by building a new cell wall from the inside as the Golgi sends vesicles with cellulose goo which makes a plate, then a wall divides the cell in two. And instead of one mother cell, we now have daughters too. Identical twins, kind of old but kind of new. From your single cell beginning, this is how you grew. And for single cell eukaryotes, it's reproductive too. Mitosis, chromosomal ride in a pro meta anatela phase divide. Eukaryotes go from one cell to two. Mitosis, how cells renew. Mitosis, chromosomal ride in a pro meta anatela phase divide. Okay, guys, eukaryotes go from one cell to two. Mitosis, All right. how cells renew.